the idea that some of us think we're really great people, but in the real world we're not. We're terrible people. Nerdorotic.com Will Kevin Feige's Star Wars film spell the end for the George Lucas era? Well, I believe the George Lucas era died when Disney purchased Star Wars. Some will argue it was The Force Awakens, and others will argue that it was Luke Skywalker tossing his father's lightsaber over his shoulder. But there is no argument that Disney has betrayed George Lucas and the fans. Now, before I get started, if you like what I do, please consider subscribing to the channel. Recently, YouTube has made some changes to the algorithm, and uh, my videos are not getting the traction that they once were. It's not just happening to me either. It's happening to a lot of your favorite YouTubers inside and outside the Fandom Menace. So if you could like and share the videos as well, I would appreciate it, and they would appreciate it. Since being sidelined in 2012, the creator has kept an ally at the franchise's helm and Kathleen Kennedy, but is she about to be usurped as Overlord? Wow, there's so much wrong with that statement. But again, we need to talk about the timing of Kevin Feige being announced for a Star Wars film, and I agree 100% with Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. This was a distraction. They needed to change the narrative quick, but unfortunately, we're not going to forget it. And yes, I agree with Jeremy again. I think that Disney was probably working on this deal for quite some time, and maybe they were going to announce it later, and they decided to move the announcement up. They dropped it at night on a Wednesday, which I don't know if that's normal or not, but again, that's Jeremy's speculation that I completely agree with. Kathleen Kennedy is no ally to George Lucas. Now that's something we've all known, but we just recently got some confirmation from Bob Iger and his autobiography. So thanks again, Bob, for dropping a gift in the fandom menace's lap. Now one backstab deserves another, and that's just a day that ends in Y in Hollywood, but this is definitely as the Disney world turns and the Disney schadenfreude just gets that much better. While there are plenty of subjects that are worthy of individual videos, you are going to get a Star Wars smorgasbord wrapped around Brie Larson. It doesn't make me feel any better to know that this was George's fault. He made an emotional business decision, and that is the first thing you learn in business not to do. Even the most innovative billionaire in the history of Hollywood can make a bad decision once in a while. And Kathleen Kennedy betrayed both George Lucas and the fans, and I will show you a bit of her mindset a little later on in this video. Now, most of this Guardian article is a recap of what we already have heard from Bob Iger's autobiography. If you haven't, please check out my video right here, but it's the last couple of paragraphs that I found interesting. Lucas has always deflected criticism of his wackier Star Wars ideas by pointing out that his thinking is based on the idea of constant evolution, which on the face of it sounds preferable to the nostalgic approach subsequently adopted by Abrams and Disney. And I'm glad that they included Abrams because Abrams can't innovate anything. All he does is copy and then destroy. And Disney seems to have taken a cue from him. Now get ready, prequel fans, because the author of this Access Media article is about to make you blow a gasket. Yet... It was the focus on introducing new cultures and technologies that led to the awful prequel trilogy and its preposterous midichlorians. Now, I am not the biggest fan of the prequel trilogy, and I am definitely not a fan of midichlorians, but again, I would take that all day compared to Disney Star Wars. Tiny beings that live symbiotically inside humans who are strong with the Force. Given we know that Lucas's ideas for the new Star Wars films would have explained even more enthusiastically into this theory, he wanted to introduce microscopic creatures known as the Wills, who control just about everything in the galaxy. But way to pick at George Lucas. Way to bring back tired, old arguments to belittle the man so you can usher him away and bring in, what, the Kevin Feige era of Star Wars? If the George Lucas era of Star Wars is done, then that means Star Wars is dead. It's no shock that Disney chose to knock about space larks of The Force Awakens instead. I have no idea what that statement was. Was that some kind of British jargon there? Again, I was right there with you. I completely understand why Disney did what they did. I completely understand why George Lucas chose Kathleen Kennedy. 
Hindsight is 2020. But it sure took Disney Star Wars a long time to figure out what the fans were telling them for years. One of the biggest important moves Lucas made prior to handling over Star Wars was to recommend his Lucasfilm co-chair, Kathleen Kennedy, as the studio's new president, a position she still holds. Well, not for long. Kennedy has taken an occasional ruthless approach to the saga. I would agree with that. Hiring and firing at will in order to ensure it stays on course. No. So the agenda and the feminism and the Kathleen Kennedy cosplay can stay on course. I'm going to have a real hard time with this sentence, but we can get through it together. She brought in the excellent Rianne Johnson, who wasn't afraid to throw the cat amongst the pigeons and throw the franchise into the shitter with the surprisingly radical latest entry, The Last Jedi. There is no accounting for taste. I do not believe there are people still defending this movie based on the actual film itself. Now, you can call it bold because idiots are bold all the time and are. Look, one just wrote an article and they recap that she fired Colin Trevorrow, who of course wanted to keep Luke Skywalker alive, and Lord and Miller, who went on to win an Academy Award, which are completely useless and meaningless awards that mean nothing to the fans, but still mean something to the creatives and repurposers in Hollywood. So that had to be embarrassing for Kathleen Kennedy and Disney Star Wars. And it shows what terrible taste she has. And it also shows her priorities. Now, I was on a live stream with Geeks and Gamers a couple days ago. Link will be in the description. And I saw something pretty enlightening that lets us know what Kathleen Kennedy's mindset is, what her first priority is. Let me give you a hint. It's not honoring George Lucas's legacy, Star Wars, or narratives. Changed. I just recently went um, to a Saturday Night Live taping, and I was sitting at the front row of the balcony, and I leaned over, and I was looking at a number of the people on the, on the floor operating camera and, and stage managing. And all of a sudden, I was like, I turned to my husband, I said, look, there are no women. I need to correct myself. She does prioritize narratives, political narratives, but not story, not character, not character development. And to echo what everyone said on the live stream, and that was Anna, Uche, Jeremy, Mahler, and Tom from Midnight's Edge while we watch this. No real people think like this or talk like this. That is Hollywood perspective, Hollywood speak, elitist speak, maybe the woman who worked there or women who worked there didn't work that night. Maybe it was a different shift. Maybe somebody called in sick or maybe just maybe those were the best people for the job. And it just happened to be men in this situation. Way to throw NBC under the bus, by the way. The access media continues to defend by calling Abrams eventual return to oversee episode nine was seen as something of a coup I see it as desperation and the only person willing to take the job, even though it was rumored that he turned down the job of replacing Kathleen Kennedy. But Solo emerged as somewhat dull and lifeless entry, a movie that felt squeezed together by too many hands felt it was, and it was dull and lifeless. Iger has since admitted that Disney may have been over ambitious in its attempts to release new Star Wars movies every year. They were over ambitious in one way, pushing too much agenda in each one of their Star Wars films. And if people still deny that this is one of the major factors in them alienating a large portion of the audience, you just need to maybe consider you're not being honest with yourself. A policy that Kennedy must surely have played a part in implementing, you think? I guarantee she played a part. You did hear that audio I just played. There is a certain irony then in this morning's news that Kevin Feige, the producer whose work on the Marvel Cinematic Universe inspired Disney to turn the space franchises into an expensive macro saga, is due to take on his own Star Wars film. It is hard not to imagine that getting him involved in Star Wars rather undermines Kennedy's previously untouchable position as Queen Bee. The reason that we hear this position is untouchable is because nobody wants it and they don't want to be seen firing a woman. That is something that even the Hollywood Reporter admitted to yesterday and that we have all been saying. From the Hollywood Reporter, Disney has been criticized for its lack of women in top roles at the company. So any move to displace Kennedy may create 
perception problems. The last few days have been crazy. We have Bob Iger being stunningly honest in his autobiography. And then we have the Access Media finally admitting that there is a divide in the Star Wars fandom, not just a small group of incels in their parents' basement, which I'm sure we're going to hear that when the Rise of Skywalker returns. But then we also hear them admit that they wouldn't fire somebody because they have different parts than a man. If so, we may finally be entering a true endgame for the George Lucas era of Star Wars. Again, that era ended a long time ago. And that came very close to being a very clever way of spinning Kathleen Kennedy completely failing. Did you see how they tried to put it all on the George Lucas era? This was the Kathleen Kennedy era, and it has failed, and it is done. It's just waiting it out now. I don't think Kevin Feige is actually going to replace her at this point. I think he's going to be a bridge to somebody else, maybe. He could. I don't know. I kind of see him being Disney CEO someday or something much bigger, but we'll have to see. All I know is Kevin Feige has gone completely woke, and this brings us to Brie Larson. That's right, Brie Larson. Now, when this news dropped, I did a quick, short, live, visceral video reaction of the news. You can check it out right here. And within that Hollywood Reporter article was this. One knowledgeable source says, Feige has told a major actor that there's a specific role he would like that person to play if and when he makes the move. Just when the fandom menace wins a battle, it takes one in the shorts. But honestly, it's the Star Wars franchise that's going to take one in the shorts. And while this, of course, is not confirmed, everybody is assuming this. And I'm starting to think that Brie has something on Kevin Feige, or in my opinion, there's something really going on there. If you've been a fan of genre for any amount of time, you might remember a guy named Joss Whedon and his relationship with an actress named Elijah Dushku. She was around the creative quite a bit, got to star in her own show. I saw a panel at San Diego Comic-Con where I thought they were going to go behind the curtain and get it on. I'm starting to get a Joss Whedon, Elijah Dushku vibe between Brie Larson and Kevin Feige. We all know how that ended for Joss Whedon. I did a video on this ages ago, but that's neither here nor there. Brie Larson is not going to save Star Wars, and I highly doubt she will be in it. I think this is based on a cosplay picture and people just assume that Kevin Feige loves her because he's come out and said it so much. She is perfect in every way. But we know what Brie Larson thinks about most everything. It's really hard. It certainly is, Brie, and we know what you think about a certain portion of the Star Wars audience. I do not need a 40-year-old white dude. But this brings us back to Kevin Feige, who was also not going to save Star Wars. Now, right now, it is just one film, but we know what this really means. Kathleen Kennedy is about to exit the building. When? I don't know, and I don't care, because it is too late for Star Wars. Life is not always as easy as one would uh, hope. And I haven't even gotten to the woman who got fired for Galaxy's Edge being empty, and it was the wrong woman because it should have been Kathleen Kennedy. Well, it's been an insane week of Disney news and Disney schadenfreude, and we have Bob Iger to thank for that, so maybe he is secretly fandom menace, and we know George Lucas is fandom menace, and now it looks like Kathleen Kennedy might be on her way out. So she lost, George lost, and we, the fans, have lost. And it looks like all we have left is Disney Star Wars and the only hope we have is that Kevin Feige can make a good Disney Star Wars movie and quite frankly it's not Star Wars and it never will be. As it stands right now Feige and Kennedy will be working together. We'll see how that works out. Nerderotic.com please subscribe.